So our Treasures exhibition is our permanent exhibition where we show the breadth and the depth of our collection. So for example, here we have some of the oldest pieces in the exhibit. This is a James Gilray print from 1798 and a wonderful uh, color etching by Charles Williams from 1807. Wow, that's pretty old. And then if you look in this drawer, we have some 19th century American humor magazines. And this was a really important form of distribution for cartoons and comics. And you see that the covers had a, a wonderful editorial cartoon. Usually these were uh, color lithographs called chromolithographs. And then there was also cartoons throughout the, the magazine. So this is fun and unique. This is a very early comic strip. This is from 1904. And it's called The Upside Downs of Little Lady Lovekins and Old Man Mufuru. And the unique thing about this is you would read the comic strip, and you can see the captions here below. And then you would turn it upside down to finish the story. So each of the characters becomes the other character when it's upside down. And uh, it's really clever. I don't know how the artist figured out how to, how to accomplish this, but every week there would be a strip that you could, uh, you could read both ways. Oh, no, wait a minute. I saw something earlier. It was a lunchbox. <laughs> I used to have one like that when I was a little boy. This what is, is this? Steve Canyon. Uh, Who's, Steve Canyon was created by Milton Kniff, who's our founding donor and an Ohio State alum. Uh, of course, cartoon characters are on all kinds of toys and merchandise, and we, we all have them. Uh, and this is just a, a tiny sampling of what's out there. These are the very first two Dick Tracy dailies that were printed in the newspaper. They were printed in the Detroit Mirror. And you can see that Dick Tracy looked a little bit different back then. Uh, it took a little while. He evolved over time. And the wonderful thing about looking at this original art is that you can really see the hand of the artist. So you can see where the artist used whiteout or used blue pencil or blue line, which would not show up in the photographic process. But it's wonderful to, to be able to reference the original art because you can see things that you wouldn't see in the printed version. Jenny, I've seen some pretty cool furniture in my time, but you've got <laughs> something really unique here to show us. Yes, this is the drawing board of Chester Gould, where he created all of the Dick Tracy comic strips. And what's interesting about this is that you can see here on the right-hand side, there's a charred black area. That's because Mr. Gould would strike a kitchen match when he was done with his comic strip, and he would hold it underneath the original art where there was a big area of black ink in order to dry that area. So you can see an example of that here where there's a big area of black and he wanted to dry it quickly so he would strike the kitchen match and hold it underneath the original and if you turn over the original you can actually see on many of them where the soot is from the the match from the flame so this is 40 years of of striking kitchen matches on a drawing board